Today, I purchased a massive PSA 10 Starlight Rare Yu-Gi-Oh collection, and we're about to show it in this video. What's up guys, we're back with another insane collection video. I purchased a Starlight collection from a viewer of over 30 cards in PSA 10. But before we hop into it, he sent us a note. So let's open this thing up. Hey, Big Bro Rux, thank you for everything you do. In this box, you will find 34, so that's the exact number, PSA 10 first edition cards, one Asian English card PSA 10, and one Japanese PSA 10 giveaway card. Very exciting, we got a giveaway. I'm looking at the card. Uh, there's, there seems to be an issue here. This is a PSA 9. Remove the sleeve. Okay, so maybe... I think it just meant to put nine. So I think that's the only thing there. So very, very cool. This is going to be awesome. I'm super excited. Shout out to the guy who sold me this. This is super fun. And obviously we've seen the giveaway here. So this is the Japanese card, the uh, Palladium Oracle Mahad. Let's open this thing up. Uh, he said take the sleeve off for whatever reason. I don't, I don't know why we needed to take the sleeve off, but <laughs> we did. Okay. So here's the giveaway. All you have to do is like the video, be subscribed, turn on notifications. Let me know down below your favorite card in this video. These cards are going to be going up on ruxon34.com. So if you are interested in any PSA 10 starlights we show here, they're going to be on my website. Go check out ruxon34.com. They will be available until someone buys them. Then they won't be available. But <laughs> sometimes people ask me, are they still available? I'm like, no, it's sold, unfortunately. But I'll try to leave it up as like zero stock if it's sold. So if you see it and it has zero stock, that means it's sold. Uh, if you don't see it i might have deleted it but i'm gonna try not to do that okay so we're gonna go through these all 34 cards here uh there is another one that he labeled this one as asian english but this is not technically asian english this is the card that we search for the blue eyes white dragon starlight that's actually a japanese card so uh, i guess he said that because it's in it I means like asian english like because it's you know the english on the front and Japanese on the back, like Asian English, but they actually released this in a Japanese set. So it was just a Japanese card that they made English on the front. So this is one of the first ones. I do have a PSA 10 of my own that I graded, the one that we pulled, uh, I guess that was a year and a half or so ago, something like that. It's crazy, it's been that long. So that is one that we have gotten. These are all PSA 10. So PSA 10, PSA 10, there's gonna be a lot of them. All right, and I did sleeve up the rest of these. We have a Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion. This is one we never pulled out of Dimension 4, so you guys remember. That was the one where there was that crazy situation where some store ended up with a bunch of Starlights in their packs. They were getting like four per pack. Uh, something crazy like that happened. So I'm guessing this one isn't like super rare in PSA 10, but maybe it is. I haven't checked the pop or anything, uh, but it's a very nice card. I never pulled it though. It's still very hard to pull if you don't get those crazy cases. The next card is a PSA 10 Heavenly Zephyr Miradora. So if you are... I think I feel like if you're like a big Starlight PSA 10 collector, there's a good chance that one of the because we have some random ones, we have some nicer ones. There might be one that you're looking for. So keep an eye out for that on my website. Plus, I have a ton of other stuff on there as well, including the current box break, whatever it is, which they've been selling pretty quickly recently in the current bo box break. So they may be sold out, but I've been doing them pretty weekly trying to keep that up. So keep an eye out on there for that. And if you do want to do box breaks, don't forget you can get a discount by being a member down below, join button, and you can also become a Patreon at $10 level. You get your money back every time you buy a pack. So if you buy like 10 packs, you 10X your investment on my on my thing per month. So investment's the wrong word there. It's not really an investment. It's more of a support thing, but then you get like a bonus back for it. Okay, the next thing is uh, Alba Linitus, the Abyss Dragon. This is a card that when it first came out, people thought it was gonna be crazy good in the TCG. Turns out it wasn't. The thing about it though, it's a really cool artwork and the Starlight Rares, first of all, you know, way better than 25th anniversary in terms of the look. You can actually see the card, the artwork, the name. I just think it looks better. And then the cool artwork on this one is really, really awesome. The card itself, not that playable or anything, but I really like it. All right, and by, at the end, we're gonna do a, probably a little shot of all of them, you know, just kind of go over and be like, ooh, that's all those 34 Starlight PSA 10s. Blackwing Armor Master, this is one they made a PSA 10 in Crystal Revenge and then immediately made a 25th, like right after that. So there's both options for this, but as I've said, I really like the Starlight. Crystal Revenge, Secret Starlight, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. Yeah, I want to call it a Secret Rare because it's like more like silvery than the quarter centuries. They're more ultra-y with the goldy. They're more ultra-y with the gold lettering. Okay, the next one is a Shooting Majestic Star Dragon. I did have one of these for sale on my website for a while and uh, I think someone ended up picking it up. So we've had one of these before and now we have another one, the Dawn of Majesty. We pulled all of these, if you remember, Starlight Stardust. Yeah, it was... A lot of effort. Starlight Stardust took a long time. This one, on the other hand, we pulled pretty quickly. Pretty nice looking card though. All right, a lot of nice stuff. We have Tier Limits Rule Kalos. This one, we admit, it's so funny because all the Starlights, I have like some sort of connection, not all of them, but a lot of them I have some sort of connection with. I was trying to pull this uh, this one out of uh, Dabble. Yeah, Darkwing Blast, which we open a lot of. We pulled this one with Simo at YCS 
Pasadena, maybe? I think that's where that was. Uh, in a hotel room. We were like, yeah, let's open a gold series. I have a couple extra packs we could open. And there happened to be a Starlight Rare in there. That was so amazing. It wasn't this one, obviously, because we just bought this. Okay, the next one is Exosisters Magnifica. This one... Daifo, yeah, Dimension Force, we didn't really pull a lot of Starlights because I wasn't super excited about any of them. Like Ghost Bell, I was like, oh, that's a pretty cool one. But it was kind of, I think, think it was around some other bigger sets. So I didn't really go too crazy on that one. So we didn't see too much. Speaking of new sets, though, it's been forever since we've had one. And next week, we finally have a new set coming out, Legacy of Destruction, which is pretty exciting. So we're going to be opening up for, I don't even know if the cards are in there at the time of recording this. So something fun, hopefully. Exosister Magnifica, very cool. All I remember is about Exosisters is I did play against them on Master Duel for a little bit, didn't like them. So they were pretty tough. So uh, yeah, oh, Divine Arsenal, A Zeus, Sky Thunder. That's a nice card. That's a nice card. I once had... I think we had a PSA 10 of this at one point. I pulled one. I don't think I ended up grading mine because I think it wasn't going to get a 10 or something. I don't remember what the deal was with it, but that's a nice PSA 10. I mean, Zeus, honestly, one of the coolest cards they've made in a while. Super meta relevant for a long time. It's still pretty good. It's just a really awesome artwork. The name is just intimidating. I mean, there's a little bit too much. Like, it doesn't need to have like six words in it, but it is a good name. It's a, it's a good name. It sounds great. So that's got to be a fan favorite right there. Uh, Utopia, this is just bringing back bad memories of the fact that Battles of Legend Armageddon got reprinted and they just reprinted the Astral artwork. Fortunately, they did it in Ultra, not in like Starlight or anything or whatever you call this. Astral Rarity. But yeah, still a cool card. I mean, Utopia, very iconic, very classic. Then we have Cashier or Rise Heart, another crazy card uh, that was like, I mean, Cashiers were really popular for a while. And by popular, I mean really good. Not necessarily popular. I think people kind of hated them. But it's a very, very cool looking card out of Fan of Photon. Photon Hypernova. I want to say Phantom Nightmare, then Phantom, then Photon Nightmare, Photon Hypernova. All these names, they're very similar. So you got to kind of work through to get to the right one. Photon Hypernova, though, was absolutely cracked when it came out. Really good set. Uh, super popular. Kashtira. Yeah, the in Kashtira. You know, they're they're good. They're kind of iffy, but whatever. Oh, and here's a nice one. Here's one that we have never pulled and we still want to pull. I still have some Burst of Destiny, I think. Still want to pull this thing. Man, for some reason, this looks like... It looks a lot different. I mean, maybe it's because of the effect monster, but it's also a little bit older. So the Starlight print could have changed a little bit throughout the years, but it actually looks like kind of subtle almost compared to some of these other ones. Very beautiful card. Okay, Elemental Hero Stratos. That's one of my favorite ones. I mean, the ulti is great and it looks better to be honest, but this one, honestly, it gets a lot of hate. It looks almost as good. I'm not gonna lie. I think it looks almost as good. Okay, next one is Dragoon, which is a really awesome one. I graded some of mine and I only got nine. I, maybe it was only one, but I got a nine. We ended up giving it away because it didn't quite get the 10. I was just like, ah, I might as well just do a giveaway because it'd be a really awesome giveaway. We ended up giving it away. Very cool card, Red Eyes Dark Dragoon, PSA 10, Brothers of Legend. At this point, it's kind of crazy how long ago Brothers of Legend was. All these 2022 sets feel like yesterday, and it's like we're two years later. It's nuts. Red Eyes Dark Dragoon, I mean, gotta be the best Starlight. I mean, is there a better Starlight than this just because of like Red Eyes, Dark Magician, put together in a fusion that was also playable for a long time and really, really good. Is there a better card than this? I mean, name it in the comments if you have one, but that or in by card, I mean Starlight. Is there a Starlight rare that's more iconic than this? I don't know. You could argue Stratos, but people like the ulti better, so it doesn't really count. We have the Leviathan Dragon. This one, it's crazy that this PSA 10 is like the same price as what we paid for the raw card in our investment. Yeah, it's bad. It's bad, bad, bad how much we spent on that raw card. Uh, this card, it just not gotten much love. I think it's really cool. Leviathan Dragon, kind of random in terms of like cards to pick for you for astral but i mean it's a sweet card so i'm a fan of it all right still a lot of cards left we have the gorgon empress of the evil eye this is a i already had one of these so we're gonna have two of these available because i think one of them is still available on my website uh this is a card from one of the very first starlight sets uh chaos impact so second set ever so that's all we need, really need to say about that it's no ip mascarena this one has Mirror Jade, the Ice Blade Dragon. This is a classic for all of you branded fans out there. They are never going to give up on their branded decks. And Mirror Jade is, you know, a big part of it. It's a very, very good card in that deck. Really beautiful Starlight Rare. Pretty much the only one I was interested in, Photon Hypernova, because the other one was like Kashtira and stuff like that. But this card was pretty awesome, and we pulled it pretty quickly, which we can't always say for these Starlights, so that was cool. Uh, Dark the Dark Charmer Gloomy. This one this one used to be way more expensive. I think uh, it kind of got, uh, I guess it's less good now because it used to be crazy expensive, just raw card, but not so much anymore. 
Still pretty expensive, but compared to some other ones, not so much. Dark the Dark Charmer. Gloomy Jiminton. All right. Uh, Area of the Water Charmer, Gentle. So very similar. It's from Etco, Eternity Code. You know, this is a big one because Etco had, you know, Effect Failure. This is one of the big ones. Has a lot of really nice cards in there. So Jim Minton, Area of the Water Gen Charmer, Gentle. It's confusing how they have like the Water Charmer, then they add a new one and just says like a adjective after it. <laughs> it's very strange. Same thing with the Dark the Dark Charmer. Very weird. Uh, speaking of, we have Heat of the Fire Charmer, comma, Ablaze. <laughs> there you go. It's it's Ablaze. Uh, that is a nice looking one out of Phantom Rage. Is, that's the same set as Zeus, right? Phantom Rage? Yeah, I think so. Okay, moving on to the next one. Princess Seahorse, this is from Rising Rampage, the very first set with Starlight. So this is the literally the original Starlight. There was four that came out at the same time. So four original Starlights. This is one of the four. That makes this pretty crazy. Even though it's Marinza Seahorse, it's not as interesting as something like Opelosa. It is still really classic because it's literally the first one. If you, I mean, it's tied with three others, but still literally the first one. I mean, you could say like, oh, but the number is based on what's the first one. So I don't know which one it is based on that, but EN003. So this is up there. I mean, the other one might be zero, one, two. Yeah, it might just be the fourth one, actually. But I don't know if that's how they did them or not. Dark Magi Okay. I, I was arguing for Dark uh, Red Eyes Dark Dragoon earlier. This one has an argument. The Dark Magicians. I mean, it has Dark Magician Girl and Dark Magician on it. So that's a... That's a big rival for the Red Eyes plus Dark Magician fusion. Either way, though, very good choices. The Dark Magician's Battle of Chaos is very cool. This one's not as strong as Red Eyes Dark Dragoon, though it is good in a Dark Magician deck. So it's pretty decent there, but, you know, it's a Dark Magician deck, so that kind of hurts it. Very beautiful card, PSA 10. We still are, like, barely halfway through. We have Tri-Brigade Arms, Bucephalus 2. I think I pulled this one. I'm pretty sure I pulled this one one time. This is from uh, Photon Hypernova as well. Yeah, I randomly pulled this in, like, a... We were doing one of those openings where we're trying to get the points, I think, maybe, is when I pulled this. So that was pretty cool. Not a super high-end one, but pretty awesome to actually pull it. I think I actually pulled it, put it in one of my decks because it was like a side deck card. Or an extra deck card, I should say. Obviously, extra deck, it's a link. But it was an extra deck card in one of the decks I was building. So I think that's where that is. I haven't even thought about that card in a while. Because sometimes my decks, I build them and they kind of just sit there for a long time. So uh, maybe I'll find it eventually. All right, more cards. Time Thief Perpetua. This is one that was actually surprisingly uh, scarce. Like, I wasn't finding a lot of info on it online. It is for my gas, so it's a little bit older, but Time Thief Perpetua, actually pretty decent. I think that was this one, right? Then when I was looking, I'm not... I feel like it was, now I'm second guessing, but pretty cool card. Then we have the Starlight Stardust Dragon, and this is this is one of the top ones. This has an argument with Red Eyes Dark Dragoon, with the Dark Magicians. I mean, it's the 5Ds cover card, basically, you know, the top monster of 5Ds. Yusei's iconic monster, uh, you know, it's Jack. Doesn't, doesn't he have to get it back from Jack Atlas or something? Something like that, but classic Stardust Dragon, first edition. Took us, what, how many cases was it? 12, 13, I don't remember, 10. It was a lot. It was a lot of cases. I didn't get the PSA 10 on mine, though. I got the 9, unfortunately. Uh, Illusion of Chaos. This is another one I really, really like. It's just an iconic magician card, which is really cool. And the artwork on it is some of the best, I think, in Yu-Gi-Oh. I think it looks great. And the coloring on this card with like, the green background. It's just an awesome card. I really love this card. I own one of these myself. It's surprisingly cheap. This card is very, very cheap in PSA 10. So, you know, it's a, it's an affordable one. I think it's like 200 or something. It's very low. It's like, that's like a price of a raw starlight a lot of the time. So very cool on that one. Here we go. Another adjective card. Also the Earth Charmer Immovable, PSA 10. We have the Effect Veiler. So here I think is the biggest and most expensive card in the collection. This one valued around a thousand bucks, something like that. Very, very expensive one from Eternity Code, which is a 2021 set, almost three years at this point. Very, very, I mean, you playable card. I mean, it's graded, so it's not now, but playable card is what, what made it so iconic. And then it's been around since Duelist Revolution, the original print. So it's had many years to become like a fan favorite and stuff like that. And then, of course, being an Etco and a pretty rare one. Uh, yeah, very expensive. So I remember trying to get Etco at Walmart. I went to a Walmart in like Florida or something trying to find it. And I remember there being some packs of Eternity Code and I was so pumped. I bought like a bunch of them. The Walmart was absolutely packed because I guess people, I don't know, somewhere in Florida and those people were everywhere. Like I went to that, that Walmart and there's just people everywhere. I was like, why are there so many people in this? I think it was a neighborhood market too, but for some reason they had 
uh, Yu-Gi-Oh cards. So it worked out pretty good, but it was it was wild. I don't know why. I guess I just remember that because uh, Edco was so hot at that point. OK, a few cards left. We still have Arm Dragon Thunder level 10, a pretty classic one. I mean, Arm Dragon Thunder didn't really catch on. It's like an interesting archetype or anything like that. The Arm Dragon stuff's pretty old and classic, but not really that interesting in today's meta. But honestly, pretty cool artwork, you know, pretty cool to see those classics come back and get high rarity cards. So PSA 10 on that one, of course. Oh, no, this is the one I was thinking of. The Trap Tricks Alamaris was the hard one that, to find. This one was not the Time Thief Perpetua. This one was surprisingly, there was like one nine available for like $600. And I was like, that doesn't make sense. Uh, some of the sales were a little bit iffy on some of them, but I think it's a pretty expensive card. I'm not sure why. I don't know if it had to do with the Trap Tricks deck last year, but I don't know why it would because it's a PSA graded card. And then I looked up to pop. I think it was like 20. So it wasn't like that low. So I don't know what's up with this one. This one's a little bit mysterious. If you have an info about this, I mean, Edco, I guess is the only thing that I've talked about. Eternity code being hard to find. Maybe, I don't know. But maybe it being playable, like some of the other ones, they're less available in raw card, maybe? I don't know. Here we go, a little adjective card, Linda the Light Charm Illustrious. We invested in this one in our TCG player video. That's not going to go well, I'm sure. Then we have a, a Pedicel Colvature. That, they're probably supposed to say that with some kind of accent. I don't know. I don't have it. Uh, PSA 10, cool. A few more, four more cards, actually. Chamber Dragon Maid. This is probably uh, a top-end favorite for some of you people that are Dragon Maid fans. So Dragon Maid. Also Edco. So it looks like we have like all the Edco. That's like three or four of them. Wait, there might've only been four in Edco. No, no, because Effect Veiler was in there. That was the fifth one. Okay, so maybe we have, we might have all the Edco. I haven't paid attention. Chamber Dragon made Jim Mint 10. That is a really nice looking card. Very popular. Three cards left. We have Protecting Spirit Loagant. This is from uh, Dawn of Majesty. If you guys remember, we opened this thing up many, many times. We've mentioned it already, trying to get that Stardust. So we pulled that pretty quick. We have a Win the Wind Charmer Verdant. So that is from Rising Rampage, the original. So this is an original Starlight as well. There was no Opelosa in here, unfortunately. Uh, that would have been pretty crazy. But uh, there's a Win the Wind Charmer. So very cool Starlight Rare there. And our final card, if you guys have enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and make sure you check out Ruxin34.com if you're interested in any of these cards, any other cards. I have a lot of raw cards. I have sealed product like sealed tens, sealed boxes, PSA, CGC cards, all kinds of stuff on there. Go check out Ruxin34.com. And the final card is Access Code Target. This is a good one to end on. Originally in Eternity Code, and then it comes out as a Starlight Battles Legend Crystal Revenge. Really awesome classic card. Really, really nice. So pretty crazy PSA 10 collection of Starlights. I know the person who put it together took a long time and it costs a lot. And I know some of them have gone down quite a bit, you know, because it was like back in 2021, some of that, some of the stuff's come down. So I know it took a lot of effort and time and cash to get that together. So shout out to them for selling it to me. It's very cool, very excited to have these and show them off to you guys. And of course, now you guys can be a part of it and grab some yourself. So go check out my website. And it was really cool to see a lot of these in PSA 10 because I have never owned a lot of these in PSA 10. Shout out to Tone Fo Show, Puff and Zudum, Ernesto Dan, America Deutscher, KK Beats, Nutter Sai Show, Ian Moose, Junior Barning, Robert F, Thomas McLean, Chang Lang, and Aldelso Galicia Jr. Thank you guys for supporting the channel and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.